All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the College of Business and Economics, your graduation workshop. Before we begin, just make sure that you message your name and CIN to the chat to check in. That way we can mark your attendance down and make sure we know you're here. Second of all, we're going to have a URL that we're going to type into the chat box. It'll be a little graduation survey for you to fill out just for our records only. And lastly, make sure you log on to your Get account and log on to your student center. Once you have all of those done, we're going to go ahead and begin. So let's just pop right into the next slide. Now, when you download the application form, this is where you align these instructions. So graduation application filing deadlines, as you can see here, every single semester has its own deadline. And you just have to make sure you submit your graduation application before that deadline. So for example, if you are planning to be done, as in all your classes are going to be done in the spring semester, you want to submit this application before October 15th. Okay, otherwise you have to pay um, a late fee, which we'll talk about later. Speaking of fees, you pay everything via CashNet. Once you pay, they're going to send you a receipt. You're going to save that receipt because proof of payment is actually part of your application that you submit to the grad office. Now, what are the fees? $20 is the application fee itself. $10 is that nice slip of paper that you get in the mail about one month after you graduate. So $20 plus $10, that's $30 total. That is your graduation application total fee. If you are late, so if you, for example, go past your deadline, if you can't submit it in time for whatever reason, that's okay. You can still submit it. However, you have a $25 late fee, which means if you submit your graduation application late, you're paying your $30 plus the $25, which would equal a total amount of $55. So just keep that in mind. Now, also, if you decide to change your application after you've submitted it, so if you want to change your almost anything, right? If you want to change your name, if you want to change the term you're graduating, et cetera, et cetera, you need a $25 change fee. Okay, so 25 is really the magic number. No matter what happens, if you got to tweak your application after you submit it, it's $25 additional. Now, if you do want to change your term, so if you're saying um, I'm graduating spring, but whoop, just kidding, I want to graduate in the fall, then you will actually have to fill out an additional change graduation term form plus the change fee, and you submit both of those to the grad office. And I do want to say that you do need that form because when you're applying on your application, let's just say you put spring, graduation office actually puts a hold on your account so that you can't enroll in classes for summer for the next fall. So if you do need to move your graduation date, then that form plus that fee is very necessary for them to release your enrollment date. That way you can enroll in, you know, whichever semester you need. Now, where do you find this graduation application? Well, honestly, I think you've heard me talk about this by now, but we Google everything. Just Google Cal State LA graduation application. It'll pop right up. Or you can go to the graduation office page if you know how to get there uh, from the website. And then there will actually be a graduation application for undergraduate degrees. And you just click on the little PDF link and boom. Next slide, you will see how it looks like. So this is the first page of the graduation application form. And it's a very simple form to fill out, to be honest. On the top left corner, you're going to see application plus diploma fee, $30. So that would be what you would check. If you are submitting this past the deadline, then you would also check the late application fee. And then basically you got your name, you got your CIN. And here's the important part. A lot of people get this wrong and I'm not quite sure why. But I get a lot of questions, am I BA or am I BS? To find that out, direct your eyes to the right side of this page and the degree sought a BS, Bachelor's of Science degree, that's either business admin or CIS. So if you are either of those two majors, you select BS. The rest of you, which is really just econ, you all select BA, Bachelor's of Arts. With that being said, you can also put your major down. Feel free to abbreviate as we've done here as well, just for the sake of time and so you don't crowd that little space. Put it in your option or your field of concentration. You should know which one you are by now. And if you do have a minor or a certificate, list it on the right-hand side. Then 
after that, you're going to tell the graduation office when you plan to graduate. Now, remember, when you plan to graduate means when you are done with all your classes. It doesn't mean when you want commencement. Graduation means when you are done with everything, all your requirements. So in this example, the student put summer 2000, you know, whatever year it might be. And that student will be done with their classes that summer, that year. They're not saying I want to walk in the summer. So do note that you're talking about when you are done with everything so that the grad office can go in and audit your account, then hand you your diploma. The next one after that is just a brief survey, you know, pick whatever fits your um, preference. And then finally, you input the date. There is no signature needed. Just make sure this application is submitted through your Cal State LA email. So the second page pretty much compels you to write something. Well, direct your eyes to the bright yellow that's kind of flashing at you, stop. Most of you actually won't need this form. If your degree planner looks right to you, you probably won't need this form. So this form is only needed if something is wrong with your requirements. If you're looking through your degree planner and you're like, hey, I took this, uh, I don't know, US history class. Like, what is it doing here? That is when you would put um, something in this degree completion worksheet. If you have something still missing in your degree planner, but you know you took it or you know it's going to be taken care of already without having to like take it at Cal State LA, then you would use this form. Another example of when you would use this form is if let's just say you need CIS 4370 and it's not offered this semester, but the chair approved another course. However, you haven't quite finished that process yet, so it still shows that you need the required course. Then you would also put it on your degree completion worksheet. So anything that looks missing and is not actually missing, like you have a game plan for it, it should go on that degree completion worksheet. Now, when you do this degree completion worksheet, you do need advisor approval. Now, the advisor will not need to sign anything. They just have to send you an email saying, I approve of your application. And then take a quick look at your degree completion worksheet just to make sure you did everything right. And then you're going to submit the application plus this worksheet plus proof of payment and also the uh, advisor approvals email. Okay, so all of those will go to the grad office. Now, we pretty much went through a good chunk of this process, but this is a four step process. The first one is to update your degree planner, you know, make sure it's all filled out. Or if you have my planner, we'll go over that later as well. You guys have a separate process. So um, number two, we're gonna run your advising report plan to verify that you're not missing anything. And um, like I said, remember, if you run your advising report plan and you're like, it says I'm missing this, but I'm not, that goes in that second page. Ideally, I think 90% of you will not need that page or maybe even higher number than that. So just remember, you probably don't need the second page. Number three is to complete the grad application, which we've already done. I've pretty much showed you how to do it. It's just that one page and then the potential second. And then finally, number four is to pay the fees via cash net and then submit to the graduation office. We'll provide their email at the very end of this. So don't worry, we got you. I'm first going to show you how to find out, are you a degree planner or are you my planner? Honestly, if you're a degree planner, you should already know because you've been using it for some time now. But just in case, Let's access it through your student center. You all know how to get to student center by now. So just click on that button. Then we're gonna move on to the next slide in which from your student center, right above that drop down menu where you usually click on degree planner. If that's familiar to you, you see degree planner right there. Hey, you are degree planner. But for those of you who are either returning students or if you've been here since before 2016, you will have my planner. And that's how it looked like on the very bottom, it says my planner. So, you know, just a little curious, I would say at this point in time, maybe check your student center. If you are my planner, go ahead and put that in the chat just so we know who you are. If you're not sure, we can work that out later. So don't worry, we got you. All right, let's move on to the next slide. As of right now, I am going to start with degree planner people first. My planner, go ahead and take a break, take a bathroom break, grab a snack, do what you gotta do. And we'll come right back to you guys um, shortly. But degree planner people, go ahead and run your degree plan and just click on that link, press okay, continue, whatever. And let's move on to the next slide. So this should be simple for you. 
if you are applying about one semester before you're done with everything, you really only have about one box left in your degree planner, right? If you have more left, that's okay, that's okay. But what you wanna do is verify the accuracy of your courses. So what that means is take a look, does this look like the classes that you're supposed to be taking, right? Like you should know by now how many classes you need left. You're like, okay, I only need capstone and like two electives, right? Look at the degree planner, yep, I'm right. And if it doesn't, then probably the second page or figure out what's going on. And if you need to move stuff around, Basically, the grad office wants to know a game plan of how you're planning to finish your courses. Are you doing it all in the spring? Are you taking one in the winter and doing the rest in the spring? Like what, what, what's going on? So fix up your degree planner. So it looks like what you wanna do. And then anything that says not selected. So remember the ones in the red, right? Click on select and pick a course that you probably wanna check out for that semester. Now, nothing is set in stone. So even if you pick it and then you submit to the grad office, it doesn't mean you're, you're stuck with that class, okay? The idea is grad office just wants to see that you've reviewed your degree planner. And really the only way they can like really see that is if you pick a course and they're like, okay, the student has looked through it. They know that they need something. So just select a course for now. It really doesn't matter. Just choose what sounds good to you. And then that semester, if you can grab it, cool. If not, Take something else from that selection. All right, once you are done with all of that, we're gonna move on to the next slide. So advising report plan is the little tiny blue link that's at the top right corner of your degree planner. Before we look into your advising report plan, let's see what we're looking for. So on the top right of this uh, slide where you see all the bullet points, what we're looking for, or rather what we're not looking for are red blocks. We don't want anything red. For example, this is how an example of an advising report might look like. I can see blue stars. I see yellow. I see, I feel like I'm talking about lucky charms here, <laughs> but basically you see blue, yellow, and green, right? And that's all good. However, I do see a red box on that little top right of this picture. So I'm like, okay, something is missing. What is missing? Direct my eyes. And I can see that um, for this one, the student marketing 443. So this student was uh, from the quarter times, but um, this student is missing one of the classes. So what do you do? You have to go back to your degree planner and odds are it probably says not selected and you just have to select something, go back to, to your um, advising report plan. Once you see everything is green, yellow, blue, horseshoes and blue moons, you're good. And um, that pretty much means your degree planner is completed. So let's move on to the next slide. All right, so degree planner people, once you have all that, you're pretty much good to go. The only thing left is to pay the fees and submit everything to the grad office. Like I said, we'll kind of finalize all the steps a little bit later on. But for now, Dr. Franco is going to go ahead and talk to the My Planner people and go over that process. Thank you, Monica. Okay, so My Planner people, things with My Planner are a little bit more manual than degree planner. So unfortunately, the process is a little bit more labor intensive, but we're going to talk about it, go over the information, the things you need to know to get you taken care of. So you can see there's my planner there. But first things first, before we actually click on my planner, you're going to go to my academic, well, academic requirements. So you can do the drop down menu. You're going to look for academic requirements. I believe for most of you, that's going to be the second one down. Once you highlight it, then you click click on the arrows and it's gonna take you to the next screen. And so here's a legend again, same thing like Monica talked about, green means it's completed, yellow in progress, red still needed. So you're gonna see the report, same thing. Um, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna start um, listing all of the requirements you have left. So hopefully if you're only applying a semester ahead of time or just before the deadline stated uh, earlier, then you're probably only needing to plan for one semester, maybe two semesters, but you're not gonna list a whole lot of courses. So this student is missing critical thinking. So obviously the student would list that course as one of the requirements they need to graduate. What I would probably recommend to you is to get out a piece of paper and a pen or pencil and just start writing down this information. And once you start writing this information down, you're just gonna work your way down the report and look for all of the courses 
uh, that you need to take. So as you work your way down, you're listing all the red spots. And then once you got all the courses listed, so again, this shouldn't be hopefully no more than, you know, three, four, five, six, maybe seven courses left. Once you got those courses listed, then you're going to click go back out to your student center. And you're going to click on my planner. And you will get to a screen that looks like this, and it should be blank unless you played around with it before, you know, added some courses. But for those of you who have not interacted with my planner, it's going to be blank. And so what you're going to do to add the courses is you're going to click on the browse course catalog button just above the unassigned area. And once you click on it, it's going to take you to a screen where it has the alphabet and this corresponds to each letter for whatever prefix of whatever department you're looking for. So for example, if you click on M, you're gonna find all the departments that have M. So for business, that's gonna be marketing and management. So this student, what they did was they already added some courses. So what you would do is you click on M, you scroll down, you see all the departments. You expand out the department and you're gonna see all the courses that department has to offer. And you're gonna, there's little boxes next to each of the courses. So you're gonna, Highlight each box of the courses you want to add, and then you scroll back up, and then you're going to click on Add to Planner. And as you can see, the student just completed that process, and they added Management 4201 and Management 4300. So once you add those courses, they're going to be put into the unassigned course area. So I know there's nothing here right now, but you'll see courses under unassigned. And they're unassigned because they're not placed into a particular term but we do want you to place those courses into a particular term. So what you would do is you would, again, check the box for all the courses you wanna to move to one specific term. You do the drop down menu, and let's say, for example, you wanna move courses to the spring semester, you look for the corresponding spring you're looking for, and then you click move, and it'll take all the courses that you have highlighted and move them to that particular term, and it'll look like this. So you can see for this student, those two courses have been moved to the spring 2019 semester. So you don't want them unassigned, you want them placed into a specific term. If they're unassigned, it's not gonna be placed into the advising report plan. So they need to be showing exactly as the plan that you're gonna to use to graduate with. Okay, so once you do that and you move all the courses, then you're ready to go for the next step. And the next step is you have to do the advising report plan. Accessing the advising report plan is a little different for my planner than it is for degree planner. So you're gonna do the drop down menu again, and just under the academic requirements, you're gonna find advising report plan. So you click on that, hit those arrows, and it's gonna take you to a screen that looks a lot like your academic requirements. The only difference is, and you can see here, now the planned courses, which are the blue stars, are now plugging in. If you go and you click on academic requirements, it's not gonna show the planned courses. It has to be advising report planned. And that's just under the academic requirements option. And so again, the student is not quite ready to go because they still have a red block, so they haven't accounted for it. So you, when you are done and everything's done properly, then there should be no um, red uh, squares and everything should be populated with something. And once you're done with that, then you are ready to go for the next step. And so the next step is paying your fees online. And so we have an online process now. And so you would go to the Cal State LA, LA Cash Net page, and you can see that link right there. And it's also actually on the application as well. I believe on page three, page three they give you the, the link as well, but it's right here. You'll log in with your credentials. Um, you can see your nine digit CIN and your birth date. So follow that exact format and that will log you in. And you'll get to a screen that actually shows a lot of different options. But initially the graduation option is not gonna show up. So what you need to do is you need to click on that view all and it'll expand everything out. And then you'll see that graduation office fees. You click view category. And then you'll get to a screen that looks like this, has a bunch of different fees. Um, there's only one or maybe two fees that you have to concern yourself with. If you are, um, if this is your first time uh, applying for graduation, 
then you just pay the graduation application fee and diploma fee, $30. So just pick the one in the upper left-hand side. If you are late, then you would add on the bottom right that late submission fee, $25, and you'd add those two fees if you're late. And so you'll add those into the cart, and then you pay the fees. And so once you pay the fees, then you will get an email confirmation, basically a, a virtual uh, receipt. And you will take that receipt as, long, as well as the application that Monica went over, and you'll forward both of those to graduation office at calstedla.edu. And so once you do that, then you are all set to go. So that's everything you need to know to apply for graduation. Uh, Monica mentioned this, but I think it's always worth noting again. You are not eligible to enroll in any terms occurring after your declared graduation date. So if you applied for a specific term, that's the last term that the university gives you. So if you put something that turned out to not be true, so for example, if you put down summer, but it's, things are gonna go into fall, the university will not allow you in, to enroll in fall until you do a day change form. And that costs $25 to, um, to do as well. So uh, make sure you're ready to go when you're applying for graduation because it does kind of finalize things. It's not a point right now where you wanna think about adding minors or anything like that. Once you're at this point, you know what you need to do. And so this is the process. Again, um, fill out the application, print or save it to PDF, pay the fee. And this is all done after, of course, you confirm through your advising report plan that everything is good to go. And you're done, and that's it. So with that being said, we are now gonna take the time to answer any questions that you have. So, Make sure to ask those questions. Uh, you can type them into chat. You can ask them, you know, you can unmute yourself, raise your hand, and then we'll answer those questions for you. But other than that, it was good to help you. Um, hopefully this helps out. Again, any questions, feel free to ask them right now. Thank you.